Vine, and this is Panorama. Digging for the black stuff. British coal is born again, but at what cost? This country has gone mad. I mean, just look at this. Labour was against open cast mining, but now it's changed its mind. Tough luck if you live next door. The nearest house is actually 37 metres away. What this is doing is destroying my life. As he sits in Downing Street, this is the moment the Prime Minister dreads, the moment when the lights go out. Industry shuts down, homes are plunged into darkness and the streets aren't safe. It simply can't be allowed to happen. So are we facing an unwelcome choice? Sacrifice some of our precious landscapes in order to get the coal to keep the lights burning. Britain was once peppered with coal mines. Then they were mostly hidden underground. Now coal is making a comeback on the surface as the government tries to secure the UK's energy supplies. And when quiet stretches of countryside are ripped up, people are horrified. On the approach here, you see we came over those wonderful fields with lovely agricultural land, prime agricultural land. And then, then, then that thing seems to rear its ugly head. Absolutely awful. Virg Rikiki lives next to this new open cast mine in Leicestershire. He can't understand why it was ever allowed. I just, just don't know how to put into words how awful the site really looks from up here. When it came to power, the government called huge excavations like this too high a price to pay in environmental terms. But as Whitehall now decided, that coal comes first. The Delhi open cast mine in Northumberland. It's as deep as a tower block and nearly half a mile long. In six years, nearly two million tonnes of coal have been carved out of the ground here. Energy supplies around the world are alarmingly unpredictable, but huge areas of this island are built on coal, billions of tonnes of it, and the government wants more of it used. Flag-waving defiance from the last protesters at Prospect Farm this morning. Environment activists concerned about global warming were among the first to wake up to a resurgence in coal. Is it possible to square what the government said when it came into office about open cast mining with the decisions the government has actually made about open cast mining in the past couple of years? No, it's clear that in practice now there is a presumption in favour of open cast mining, whatever official documents might say. We see time and again government ministers putting pressure on to make sure that open cast mines go ahead. In Derbyshire, Britain's biggest mining company, UK Coal, is digging a million tonnes of coal out of the ground. But even though work has begun, protests continue. Put the same piece of land with no gate, no fence, an open piece of land walking through from the country park to what used to be the country park before it was stolen by UK coal. The county council rejected the scheme in line with Labour's election policy, but then they were overruled by the government. Exactly where you are now is still rich land. The author of Labour's original policy thinks the shift in strategy is a step too far. 
By and large, greenfield sites are best left as greenfields. We have to accept sometimes that housing has got to be built on them or, or other things that are useful to society. But there's nothing much useful to society about open casting. It is grotesquely ugly, it can be noisy, it is certainly dusty and dirty, and it's not good for uh, people who live nearby. <laughs> Many open cast sites have a working life of four or five years. Not so here. The people of Merthyr Tidville will have this giant hole on their doorstep for 15 years. It will make safe old mine workings and restore the land, but also yield 10 million tonnes of coal, enough to supply the energy needs of much of South Wales. Do you think for one moment that a local authority in Guildford or Cobham would allow open casting to take place within 35 metres of the nearest house? Merthyr has paid a heavy price for industrialisation in the past. The coal banners want us to pay that same price again, raping the land of its assets at the expense of the people. Why is this something that you preach about in your church? Because we believe that God has given us a responsibility in the Anglican Church to care for the people, but also for the land. What I object to is the fact that right here in Merthyr Tidville, in extreme proximity to thousands of homes, this open casting is taking place. I'm about 400 metres away from this site. Alison Austin bought her home in 2003 two years before the mining company Miller Argent was given permission to work here. I actually live those red brand new houses that have been built just four or five years ago. There is no getting away from the noise. They start up at seven o'clock in the morning. They got planning permission to work until 11 o'clock at night. When do they actually finish? They actually finish now at 10 o'clock after a long and hard fight with them. But whereas they were finishing at one on a Saturday, they're now working till five to make up for it. You can't go to bed until those machines have closed down for the night. My children can't sleep until after 10 o'clock. It's not good for children. They have to be up at 7 o'clock in the morning. You've become a protester. Has this become something of a game for you now? No, no, it hasn't. It's my life. You've got to understand that. It is my life. Um, what this is doing is destroying my life. It's not a game at all. As work proceeds, the site will be greened over, starting closest to the nearby houses. Miller Argent say health and safety are of the utmost importance. In a statement, the company said, The earliest stages of the project regrettably caused disruption for those near to the site, but complaints about dust and noise, which have always been limited in number and location, continue to decline, down to two complainants last month. Members of the community are helping us with our programme of continuous improvement. Fossifran is a sign of an industry in revival. Just before the open cast scheme was approved in 2005, UK Coal was complaining that winning planning consent had become increasingly difficult. Documents released to Panorama under the Freedom of Information Act reveal that four years ago there was intense lobbying by UK Coal to secure its future. The company took its concerns all the way up to Tony Blair's officials at number 10, saying that open-cast mining in England faced almost complete extinction. What was needed, they said, was a change in policy. Panorama has learned that the government felt it couldn't be seen to relax its policy against open-cast mining. But within weeks, new guidelines appeared saying open-cast plans could be allowed if environmental damage was kept to an acceptable minimum. The coal companies took this as the green light to challenge for more open-casting. 